Lord hath made, Amen. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. In him we live and move and have our being. Just imagine what you'd be without him. <laughs> I wouldn't be a zero. A zero takes up space. <laughs> Father, I pray, Lord, for the gift of teaching this morning. I pray for the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I know how hard we try to do things in the flesh. The Father of the flesh will never please Thee. We pray, Father, for Your presence, unction, and the power. We ask it in Jesus' name, and Amen. All right, now I'm going to I'm going to cover two things this morning. I'm going to get back into Admiral Byrd and uh, the Hollow Earth, but before I do, I want to uh, I want to cover just a little bit about what happened with this Pope who just recently. Uh, toured. Is he still in the States? I don't know. Is he still in the States? Okay. Uh, I, he, uh, uh, I don't know how, how much you've kept up with him, but uh, I remember the other day, Shepard Smith. How many of you know who Shepard Smith is on Fox? Uh, he was talking about Kim Davis. And how many of you know who Kim Davis is now? I think most of you know by now who this lady is up in Kentucky. And uh, Kim Davis had a, has a bad past, all right? Let's put it simple. Nobody's going to try to cover her past. I think she's been married and divorced she's been four times to three different men. And uh, she's got a bad past, all right? Uh, she's a sinner. But she got saved four years ago. All right. Now, any Christian that knows anything about the new birth understands that's the new Kim. All right. She got saved. And she's not afraid to let people know it. And she'll come out and tell you real fast, this is who I am. I've been washed in the blood. I've heard her say it with her own lips. I've been washed in the blood. God's forgiven me and he saved me and I belong to the Lord. And uh, she witnessed to my spirit when she, when she testified this. But Shepard Smith uh, took it upon himself to literally crucify this woman on his, uh, on his, uh, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his news, uh, his news segment. He laid into her like I have never heard anybody lay into her. I mean, he really took her apart and uh, it was all about the hypocrisy and about her full of hate and all of this and judgmental. And of course, it was her attitude toward uh, sodomites uh, that stirred his ear toward her. But anyway, uh, he did all this. But then I just happened to catch him the other day, and I could not believe the change in the man, the way he gushed over the Pope. I mean, he was literally, he was in nirvana to hear this man talking about the Pope, most wonderful man on the face of the earth. How blessed we are for his presence to be here. And on and on and on and on he went about the Pope. And, uh, of course, he made his position very clear. We understand uh, where he's coming from. Uh, I want to warn you again, folks. Uh, there's still a lot of Christians in this country who believe that Fox is a, uh, is a conservative Christian network. It is not. As a matter of fact, the more I watch them, the more I'm convinced that they are controlled opposition. What do I mean by controlled opposition? I mean that uh, in order to, to uh, come across as, uh, as, uh, as, as, as giving a balanced perspective, the enemy, uh, and that's a, this is an enemy, we're not playing a ball game, these are enemies, you know. Uh, the enemy uh, will, will set up a controlled opposition so that he can make you think that, uh, that, you're getting, that you're getting your side, and you're not getting your side, believe me. There may be one or two on Fox who have any idea who the Lord is, but most of them don't have a clue. Uh, and so I just thought I'd mention that to you. Now, the Pope uh, made some statements while he was here at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City that you need to hear. And it's very important uh, to understand what this man said. Uh, now, here's a quote from Pope Francis in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Quote, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. Now let that settle in, folks. Let it settle in. All these people lined up, gushing over this Pope as if they're standing in the presence of God who calls himself the Vicar of Christ. Do you know what that word means, vicar of Christ? It means that he is literally Jesus Christ in the flesh, represented before you. That's who he is, the vicar of Christ. 
and uh, the whole the whole country's gone screaming mad over him. But <coughs> in his message at St. Patrick's, he uh, he mentioned his Muslim brothers and sisters. And he said, I would like to express two sentiments for my Muslim brothers and sisters. Firstly, my greetings as they celebrate the Feast of Sacrifice. And of course, you understand that the Muslim does not believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They absolutely reject that. God has no son. And so there is no way that a Muslim is my brother or my sister. You understand that. He's not my brother. He's not my sister. As far as humanity is concerned, we are both human beings. And as a human being and as a Christian, I would show compassion and grace and mercy toward any Muslim, especially little Muslim children. Feed them in a heartbeat. Absolutely. But they are not my brother and sister. They're not. But in any event, uh, the Pope came out with all of this, and he wanted to, uh, he wanted to uh, uh, obviously, uh, he's playing to the audience, and he's playing to the people. And let me just put it in perspective for you, Okay. I do not really know in my heart if Pope Francis really believes what he says. He is a Jesuit, Ignatius Loyola, though started the Jesuits. He swore an oath, and in that oath, part of that oath is that if I need to deceive the enemy, I will deceive the enemy. I will say whatever is necessary. The Muslim calls it taqiyya. How many ever heard of taqiyya? Taqiyya is part of the Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, foundation, and that is that if we need to, we'll lie to you. Whatever we need to do, we'll lie to you to further our agenda. Bottom line, you can't believe them. Bottom line with this pope, you can't believe him either. Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm not so sure that he believes a Muslim is his brother and his sister. I'm not so sure he believes that at all. But I am certain of this. He knows what to say and when to say it and who to say it to. Are you following me on this? Yeah. That's the point, and that's what's going on with this. How many of you know who George Will is? George Will is a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, newsman, author, Pulitzer Prize winner, George Will. He called Pope Francis the false prophet. <laughs> Think on that. He is on a, he's on daily uh, as one of the political pundits on Fox. And I don't know how long his tenure will last with Fox <laughs> since he's come out and made a statement like that. But, but he says that uh, the Pope Francis is a false prophet. And of course, he's not the only one who said that. The reason I pick him is because uh, he's so well known and so well respected and uh, has a perspective that comes from a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, journalist. So uh, the Pope has made his rounds, and he's given his speech at the UN, given his speech before Congress, and then now at St. Patrick's Cathedral. Now, where it, anybody know where he is today? What's he doing today? Philadelphia. He's in Philadelphia today. Okay, okay, Philadelphia. Uh, that's one place that I've always liked to go to, never been there. I'd like to go to the Liberty Hall there in Philadelphia. Yes, sir. Uh, Shepard Smith came out of the closet after this. He needs to go back into the closet, amen. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, his agenda would be that the Pope said uh, months ago, he said, who am I to judge a homosexual? And so when he came over here, uh, Obama uh, had him, invited him into the White House, and with that, he invited a transgender, he invited a gay activist uh, Catholic priest or nun, and he invited a sodomite something or another. He invited all these so they would be there with the Pope. And the Pope backed up from that. He, uh, the Pope has never said that he approves of gay marriage, per se. It's just that if you are homosexual, uh, you know, he's not, it's not his place to judge you. Uh, and so this is, because, this is why he is considered the Pope of the people. They've already hung a moniker on him, and so this is what he'll forever be while he's the Pope. He's the Pope of the people. And, uh, and that's the way they've styled him, and that's the way they present him to the world. Uh, as you know, Tom Horn, in his book, Petrus Romanus, if I, you remember me talking, how many remember Petrus Romanus? Tom Horn says in that book that uh, according to a prophecy given by uh, St. Malachi, I think it was, 1100, 1200 A.D., I don't, have, I don't remember the dates, hard to remember all these dates, but uh, 
they counted the popes all the way down to this one and said, this is the last pope. Now, to me, that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> so why is it wonderful? Because uh, if, the, if he is the last pope, then uh, it may very well be then that uh, we see the Lord Jesus come back in his lifetime. That would be a wonderful thing. But the most wonderful thing that could happen for any of us today would be the second coming of Christ. Nothing's greater than that. Yes, sir. Oh, that's, yeah, that's not new. He didn't coin that term. The Pope's been called the Holy Father for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of terms for him. The Holy Father, the Holy See. He speaks ex, ex cathedra from the chair of St. Peter. And when he speaks ex cathedra, ex cathedra from the chair of St. Peter, according to doctrine, that he's infallible. You hear a lot of talk over here now on this trip this time about how that a lot of Catholics are disagreeing with the Pope on on, on some of his political issues. For example, global warming. You know, the Pope has come out uh, in favor of, of, uh, of some kind of a, I don't know what they intend to do, but the earth is, uh, the, 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 these, uh, these uh, uh, what do you call them, these gases that are produced by uh, coal and carbon emissions. Yeah, that something's gotta be done about this. It's changing the atmosphere. The earth is uh, warming up and all of that and, and the green agenda, so he's bought into all of that. And, but you hear a lot of Catholics come along and say, well, we agree with the infallibility of the Pope when he speaks to issues of the church doctrine, but we don't agree with him when it comes to global warming. And so uh, that's, that's where they stand. Uh, I personally, I'm no scientist. All I, can, all I know is what I read in the papers, like Will Rogers says. And, uh, you know, I have no way of knowing these things, but I, fir I firmly believe uh, from what I've observed that the, the green agenda, the green agenda is being used by the New World Order to push a one world government. And that tells me there's something going on here that I don't need to be part of. I don't need to be part of. Uh, I mean, if they let all, if they laid all of the, of the scientific data down in front of me, you know, the temperature here and the temperature of this iceberg, the movement of this thing, this, that, and so forth, I would know where to start, folks. How many of you would? Most people wouldn't have a clue what they were even looking at. So when you come to a position and say, well, I don't believe in green agenda, or I'm for the green agenda, just go out and ask the average man on the street, do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> Most of them don't. So the reason I take the position I take is not because I'm convinced one way or the other about the green agenda. My I'm convinced that the green agenda is being used by the Antichrist to further a one world government. I get off board <laughs> immediately. I get away from that. Don't want no part of it. And that's, that's my position uh, when it comes to stuff like that. All right, so uh, uh, they call him His Holiness, and the Father, the Holy Father, and all that. Uh, the only one, there's only one Holy Father. Amen. That's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's only one His Holiness. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the only His Holiness there is. And all the rest of us are creatures. And there's only one Vicar of Christ, and that's the Holy Ghost that's in this world now, who is the, is the Spirit of Christ, who, of the risen Christ, seated at the right hand of the Father in spirit form, who comes and indwells the believer. That's the vicar of Christ, not some man sitting, uh, sitting in Rome. Now, last week, we talked about Admiral Richard Byrd, and we talked about uh, his diary. Uh, I want to call you, I want to I mention this to you this morning because it's very important. There's a lot of controversy about whether or not his diary is legitimate or not. I can't prove it. Like, it's like global warming. Who am I? I don't have access to all this information. I can't prove one way or the other whether Admiral Byrd's diary is legitimate or not. I have no access to the provenance of it, to trace it back to its origin. I have none of that. But if Admiral Richard Byrd did not write this diary, whoever wrote it obviously had contact with some deep things when it comes to the occult world. Here's what it says in the diary. That Admiral Byrd was flying over the North Pole that something took hold of his airplane, that some something began to control his airplane, that he it was literally taken out of his hands. It brought it to a descent, landed his plane, and when it did, he encountered these spirit beings that took him to their master. Their master was in a location under the earth because he literally flew down into the earth, and uh, which was one of the holes that access what some call the hollow earth 
A lot of people say, well, there can be no such thing as a hollow earth. That's a controversial thing. You say, well, then you must believe in a flat earth. No, I don't believe in a flat earth. I think we pretty well figured that out when we, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the circle of the earth. Amen. Scripture said that long before anything else. But the idea that there is something in the heart of the earth is scriptural, folks. When Samuel came up, he came up from the earth. He came up out of the earth. When the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ descended, he descended into the heart of the earth. And there, there was a place called paradise. On one side was hell, the other side was Abraham's bosom. And there was a great gulf affixed between the two. That was in the heart of the earth. Job is a good type of that in the Old Testament. He said it had bars and gates, and it had wrapped itself around him. And he had gone down, and, and uh, not Job, but Jonah. And Jonah is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ who had descended into the heart of the earth. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians talked about what is the first, that he had descended, now he has ascended. So you, uh, you, I, if I were you, I'd take it with a, I, I would take it un, with a grain of salt. I'd do some serious thinking about whether there is really an open cavernous area in the heart of the earth. Who knows? I'm not going to say it's not there. But there's one thing I am certain that is there, and that is hell, and that is the place called paradise, and that will be used again. For when the tribulation saints die in the book of Revelation, the scripture says that their souls are under the altar. They're not in heaven, and they're certainly not in hell. And so the indication is that God will open up this area in the heart of the earth again, and when he does, he'll be using it. In Revelation 9, it says, a bottomless pit was opened. Apollyon and Abaddon are the angels over the bottomless pit. Well, where's the bottomless pit? These creatures come up out of the earth. They're coming up out of the earth. And they're coming up on the surface of the earth. And so anyway, uh, this morning is not an argument one way or the other about the hollowness of the earth. But uh, according to Admiral Byrd, he flew down into an area that is connected with a hollow earth. And in it, he came in contact with a spirit being who said that we have been observing mankind on the surface of the earth, and now that you've exploded atomic bombs, we're going to have to begin to intervene in what happens with mankind. And when did the first atomic bomb uh, used in, in, in uh, anger exploded? August the 6th, 1945, over Hiroshima. And then Nagasaki, August the 9th, three days later, and killed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. But it brought World War II to an end. You need to be reminded of this fact. They don't like to give this out. But the Japanese homeland was fortified. They had hundreds of thousands of troops there ready and willing to die to stop any invasion of the Japanese homeland. And the military planners had already figured that it might cost as much as a, hundred, as a million allied lives to, to invade Japan. And, and, take that, uh, and, take the, and take that country at the end of World War II. So they chose to go with the atomic bomb, and Harry Truman was the president at that time. He made his decision based on the information given to him. So when they come along today and try to make, uh, and try to make the United States of America look like some horrible villain, you've got to remember, look at the historical context of what was going on at the end of World War II. And also remember this. In this country, there was enormous hatred for the Japanese people because of what happened December the 7th, 1941, when they bombed Pearl Harbor and killed over 2,000 of our people down there. And they came in, uh, you know, they, they came in on a Sunday morning and, uh, and uh, with no warning and attacked them. And, and, and right now, folks, at the USS Arizona battleship out there in the harbor, at Pearl Harbor, you've got the bodies of over 1,500 of our, of our troops, young men, that are in that thing. So remember, folks, uh, you don't judge what went on in 1941 from 2015 from your armchair and look back on it and talk about how horrible America was. We were head over heels in a world war, and something had to be done. And so, and so it was. And so it was. The, the atomic bomb was dropped. But anyway, this stirred up these so-called spirit beings who are going to come up here now, and they're going to do something and intervene in the affairs of mankind. Now, you know... You need to understand that what's given out for public consumption and what's on the surface of a thing doesn't necessarily uh, mean that that's exactly what's going on. Right. You know, a lot of things are used for subterfuge. And uh, the idea, well, we're going to cut, who's we? I believe that it's demonic. 
But I believe demons are smart beings. And I believe demons can materialize and dematerialize. What does that mean? I believe a demon can materialize in a form it chooses to. How do you know that? Well, the Bible says the, the devil himself can transform himself into an angel of light. Does it not say that? It certainly does. Anybody that believes the Bible knows that, it's, that the scripture is very clear about how spirit beings can transform themselves from one thing to another thing. And so, uh, and so you've got to deal with that. And uh, as I've said to you time and time and time and time again, there's a lot of different possibilities as to, as to where demons came from, but there's one thing's for certain. They are, they are a formidable foe. They're intelligent beings, and there's an agenda. There appears to be a real agenda with what's happening. So when Admiral Byrd wrote in his diary about this, he said that he tried to warn the high command in America, the high military command in America, he tried to warn them, he said this, he said that there are ships, military aircraft, that can traverse from pole to pole in unbelievable speed. He said that in 1947. And he's trying to warn the American uh, military command to prepare for this and get ready for what he saw as, the, as a possible invasion of this country from beings that were down there underneath the surface of the earth. Now, there's a lot of scenarios connected with this. One of them is, the, as I told you last Sunday, could be the Nazis. You know, the Nazi, the Germans, may have had a base in Antarctica. And that base in Antarctica was started long before World War II and was, uh, and was built up, fortified, and that Adolf Hitler may very well have escaped to that base in Antarctica. I mentioned to you last week about the rat lines. How many of you remember the rat lines? The rat lines... Uh, was an underground railroad that carried Nazi criminals after World War II into Argentina and other places and uh, got them there uh, and, uh, and, and, and made it possible for them. And some of them lived out their lives. Uh, they've done some research in this and they found that some of those Nazis lived up into their 80s, into their 90s and died in, the, uh, in that country and never were brought to justice. Uh, so uh, the, not, the, the rat lines were definitely connected with the Nazis, but the Nazis were connected with some kind of a spiritual force that would that would uh, that'll blow your mind. How many ever heard of the Vril Society? V R I L. All right, a lot of you've done some research on your own. According to the Vril Society, there is a sun in the center of the Earth that's burning, and that there are spirit beings down there that are vastly advanced to us. And the Vril Society is based on a structure of racism. Remember what I told you about the elite and racism? Do you remember what I told you about Charles Darwin and racism? Remember what I told you about the eugenics movement in America and racism? Uh, back, it, it, was no long, it was no further back than, say, the 20s, uh, the, the 20s, I think it was, and the 30s, somewhere in there. The states in America that had taken people and forcibly uh, sterilized them so that they could not have children. It would based upon the idea of a master superior race. So, you know, whatever Adolf Hitler did in Germany, uh, he wasn't original with. None of it. It had, been, it had flowed its way into him. And I personally believe the elite and the movers and the shakers of the one world government were using him as a test pattern to see how far he could go and see, how, see what would develop from it. They have been in communication with alien beings. Now you and I both know alien beings means demons. Listen to this. Michael Sala, PhD, April 10th, 2012. The Pentagon plans for alien invasion exist according to military professor. So the plan, the military, the, 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 the military planners have already made plans for an alien invasion. This is according to the research of this PhD, Michael Sala. That's quite a remarkable thing. Here is uh, Dr. Werner von Braun, as I read you last week, the father of rocketry in America, the one who was directly responsible for putting a man on the moon, who was a Nazi, World War II, came over here, Operation Paperclip. Dr. Werner von Braun saw alien bodies 
and a craft from the Roswell crash, 1947. Werner von Braun gave his testimony to someone shortly before he died. It's good thing to hear the testimony of men and women right before they die. That's the most plausible and credible time to hear what they have to say. They want to get this off their chest. They want some peace. It's the fool, folks, that takes, takes the leap into absolute darkness with no preparation. I hope I opened to the Lord God this morning that you got better sense than to come down to the last moments of your life and have made no preparation for where you're going. You need to be doing some serious thinking about what lies beyond the veil. And it's amazing at how many of these people, when it comes down to the last moments, uh, days, weeks, months, or even hours before their death, they begin to open up. They begin to open. I'll tell you right now, I would believe them. Unless they're literally gone insane or something of that nature, I would believe them. And Werner von Braun wanted to come clean about what he had seen. The idea, of course, is this. He saw the bodies. There was a government cover-up. A government cover-up of what happened in Roswell, 1947. I firmly believe that there has been a government cover-up of the UFO incident from day one. And I believe that that government cover-up was for the purpose of, for the government itself, to communicate with these beings. And they have been communicating with them on a high level. What beings, preacher? Demons. A demon can come across to you as anything. A demon can, can, can come across to you as representing some foreign planet or some foreign, uh, some foreign race or from the heart of the earth or whatever. A demon can come across to you as almost anything in the world. And I believe they've been communicating with them. And I believe that they've been trying to feed the American public some kind of a, some kind of a line they expect us to believe. And, most, and a lot of people just absolutely refuse to believe it. How many of you in here this morning really believe that two jetliners brought those two steel buildings down in, in, in New York City uh, September the 1st, uh, 2001? You really believe, you really believe that jet fuel that burns at what, 950 degrees? Somewhere in there, 1,000 degrees? Does anybody know how hot jet fuel gets? 928 degrees. Do you know what it takes to melt mild steel? It takes over 2,700 degrees. Think about that. What brought those two buildings down? Who? The government. the government. Some government. Some conspiracy. Somebody. And are they in cahoots with these aliens? With these beings? What's going on? Are, in other words, are we being set up for a final scenario where at the right time these things come up and the government presents them to me? Now, this is a book by Peter S. Ruckman. How many's ever heard of Peter Ruckman? All right. Now, you either love him or you hate him. <laughs> Let me say this about him. I respect him. I have great respect for Peter Ruckman. Don't agree with everything he says. And I found myself down through the years that if I disagree with him, I've got to have a good reason for it. That's the way it is with Peter Ruckman. I've known a lot of men in my lifetime as a Christian in the few years I've been in the ministry. This is a brilliant man. Now, this man gets accused of all kinds of things, and, and uh, you know, they say he's a lunatic and all this and that. Uh, he's 90... Uh, He's 93 years old now. He preached his last sermon down there at Bible Baptist Church a few months ago, and now he only teaches Sunday school. But I think he's doing pretty good to be 93, you know, up and going. And let me say one more time. I have great respect for Peter Ruckman. Now, uh, there's not a lot of people out here. There's a lot of cliques and circles out here that if I said that to them, I, they ostracize me immediately. Never have anything more to do with Preacher Lawson. I'm so glad... I am so thankful unto the Lord God that I don't have to worry about somebody's clique, somebody's group, somebody's church, somebody's fellowship. The only thing that matters to me is the truth. 
He's the one that saved me and called me out of hell. And he's the only one that I'm here to please. Amen. And I thank God that the Holy Ghost will lead us into the truth if we want the truth. And I find myself agreeing with a lot of what Peter Ruckman says. I've got a lot of his commentaries, a lot in book. Now here, please note this now. A lot of people will say, well, you're a Ruckmanite. How many's ever heard that term? All right, you folks aren't, you folks been around a while, good time. Uh, just because you, you, you read what Peter Ruckman said. Now, do you know that you can burn books and not burn them? How many know that? All right, you got that. You're a smart bunch. You know you can burn books and never burn them, right? Okay. You understand what peer pressure and intimidation is. Okay, we get past all that. Now, I want to read you a few things that Peter Ruckman says about, uh, about a lot of this stuff that I've been talking about. I just got this a couple of days ago. I've had this book, but I thought, let's see what Peter Ruckman says about some of this stuff. He says this, number one, UFOs are for real and have been for many, many centuries. Their regular occupants are not aliens from outer space unless some of them are demonic spirits that can materialize. He puts another. Their habitual occupants are animal mutants that have been produced by superior intelligences. In this case, the superior intelligences would have been fallen angels. How many of you understand cattle mutilations? You've, you've seen anything about cattle? A perfectly round hole bored in the, in the, in the carcass of a cow and its insides removed, and done with, 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 uh, with surgical precision. How'd that happen? You know, stuff like that going on all the time. Now, he says this. Uh, he says that the, uh, the, uh, their ancestors and progenitors were called gods and left a legacy in Greek, Norse, German, Roman, Incan, Mayan, Egyptian, Aztec, Hindu, and Indonesian mythology that has come to us down through the centuries. We all know that. These degenerate mutants are looking for this planet to live on. Their secrecy, which won't be much longer, their secrecy, which won't be much longer, their secrecy, which won't be much longer, something's about to be made known, uh, is due to the fact that their plan is not crime control or gun control, but people control. Their goal is to become gods to this planet by climbing into the seat of absolute authority. They intend to use human beings to their own end. All of the weird phenomena, listen to this now, it's a general statement. All of the weird phenomena reported between 3000 BC and AD 1990 at least where it is aerial and deals with gremlins or trolls or Bigfoot or pixies or leprechauns, etc., is connected with these aliens. And I've come to that conclusion too. There are literally thousands of sightings out there of Bigfoot and they continue. But what's the point and what's the purpose and what is it leading to? Uh, as he continues, some of them may date from 4,000 B.C. and on. He, 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 he deals with dates. This explains why an angel, now listen to this. This is quite a take. This explains why an angel preaches another gospel in the tribulation. Even though he is supposed to be cursed for doing so, Galatians 1, he is not cursed. His gospel is that there is one true God who is the creator. Now let's put our thinking hat on for a minute and see what Dr. Ruckman's trying to say. He's saying these beings are going to show up on earth and they're going to show up on earth as our creator. See, that we came from, they planted us and all this and that. And when they show up, they're taking, they're taking the authority over mankind as our creator and all that. And so he says this is why an angel flies through the heavens in the book of Revelation, preaching the everlasting gospel, and the message is, God Almighty is your creator. That makes sense, doesn't it? it sure does. It sets it in context. Because you understand, that's not the grace of God. What I talked about the other night on Wednesday night up there in the classroom, I told you that the gospel of the grace of God is that Christ died on the cross for your sins, buried, and rose again the third day. 
Anybody can be born again. Anybody. But in Revelation 14, when this angel flies through heaven preaching the everlasting gospel, there's not a word about the grace of God, the blood atonement, and the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It is a direct assault from this angel on the demonic forces on this earth that are claiming to be the creator. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Let's continue on. The moral and spiritual character of these materialistic evolutionists the mutants, aliens, and spiritual wickedness in high places, is the moral character of any unsaved atheist in the French Revolution or any unsaved evolutionist in Hitler's Third Reich, they have no morals. At heart, they are, they are, they are egomaniacal killers and cannibals. Yeah, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. They'll kill your character and testimony like they did Kim Davis in a heartbeat. And when it comes to it, they'll kill her to get her out of the way. In the book, murderers have a creator who is called their father, John 8, 44. Who is that? The Lord talk, who's he talking to? Who's the Lord talking to? Pharisees. He says, you are of your father, the devil. The plan is simple. Stay hidden for a while. Now watch this. Stay hidden for a while underground. So it's obvious that, that uh, Brother Ruckman believes. I don't know how much of a hollow earth theory he believes, but obviously he believes there's something underground. Stay hidden for a while underground. Their main affinity, after all, is with the grave, the bottomless pit, and hell. Not population of outer space or space travel. Stay hidden until the rapture. Listen carefully now at this scenario. Then comes the great revelation. That is, we have just transported so many million people to planet X. We, of course, the creators, the aliens. We have just transported so many million people to planet X or something like that because, number one, they were undesirables who did not fit into the new world order and the new age. Or, population of outer space has begun. These were transported as colonizers. One small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Uh, Neo-Darwinism is taught in every state college, state university in America in 1995. Finally, now they can come topside. Now all secrecy can be dispensed with. For now their creator can show up. 2 Thessalonians 2. That is the scenario. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion. They believe a lie and be damned who love not the truth, but took pleasure in unrighteousness. I would have to do some serious praying and get myself a scriptural basis to disagree with what the good doctor just said in that book. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Is that enough to make you think? <laughs> We've got about five minutes left. I'm going to get into anything else. I'll be hit so far head over heels. I don't know where to come up for air. Yes, sir. About every major university in the United States, uh, the study of DNA is kind of all of them. That uh, aliens from other planets seeded this planet. Right. Because DNA Transpermia. is so yes. and so amazing that yes. they can't possibly explain it. Yes. Yes. Yes, scientists, physicists are, are, are abandoning evolution by the hordes. But the only reason that so many of them don't come public is because they know it'll cost them dearly if they don't march to the tune and are part of the, are part of the show and the scenario. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Our kids were taken up to Kentucky a few weeks back, and that's a wonderful trip. <coughs> we took them up there <coughs> and... Uh, and, and, gave them the, and gave them a scientific foundation for creationism as opposed to the, as, as opposed to the fairy tale of evolution. <laughs> and that's good for kids. That's good for them. Because you see, if you swallow the evolution lie, then you swallow the bigger lie than you ever imagined. Because that evolution lie entails a whole lot more than biological evolution, monkey man and all that. It gets into social evolution. It gets into spiritual evolution. It gets into the mindset of the whole world right now that everything is evolving 
We're past that, they say. We're past that. Let's move on. That's the idea. Move on. Where are you going? I don't know, but I'm making good time. Huh. Let's go. What about the gates? What about the fences? What about the old paths? What about the markers, the landmarks? What about the truth? What about the generations that went before us? Are they stupid? Are we smarter than our grandparents? No. No. You better be careful before you tear a fence down. You take a gate down, you better find out what they got that gate up there for. If there's a prohibition on something, there might be a good reason for it. If you've got a guard guarding something, you better be careful before you just walk by that guard. God put up some fences and some gates. So here's what I'd say to you. You can get this book. Get it. Black is Beautiful. That's the name of the book. It has nothing to do with black folks. This is about, uh, this is about black as it is connected with the unseen world. Black helicopters, men in black, stuff like that, you know. Black alien faces, the, the grays and the blacks and all the rest of that. That's what this book is about. And uh, you may not agree with everything in it. I don't know if I agree with everything in it, but I'll guarantee you one thing. After you've read this thing, it will make you think. It will make you think. Now, here we are. This is 27 September. We've got a huge blood moon coming up tonight. Isn't that right? They call it a super moon. And this is one of the things I read to you about about three weeks ago, talking about the, the, the big blood moon coming up tonight. And uh, I think it's about 10, 10, 30, 10 to 11, somewhere in there. It's supposed to come up tonight. Now, of course, you know all, it, just hope that we don't have a lot of cloud cover out there because I'm going to go out and I want to see it. I'd like to see it. Uh, this is one of the many things that happens in the month of September. Remember I told you how that a lot of people are getting worked up about September. Well, this is 27 September. I think Wednesday's the last day of September, isn't it? Wednesday or Thursday, I forget. Is it Wednesday? So September will be over pretty soon. What are you saying? If the rapture's going to take place, he needs to hurry up and get us out of here before Wednesday. That's all I can say. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Things are really, really getting very dangerous. They're heating up. And nobody knows it. Uh, that's very true now, folks. Just, just think about what he just said. Uh, here's, what's, here's the scenario. Russia and China now will control the Middle East. Control the oil. And that's exactly all the resources. They're going to control it. Yeah. All of this under Obama's watch. And they say <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you one thing. I wouldn't want to play chess with uh, Vladimir Putin, would you? No. Chess is a big game in Russia, by the way. Uh, big game. Uh, these people, they think ahead. They, they think about the move, the next move they're going to make. Putin has been thinking about this for some time. Make no mistake about it. And he sees this time to do it. And so there it is. What are you going to do? You know? You got NATO sitting over there, but they're, they're talking here. Uh, what are you going to do? You've got Russia sitting over there. He's moved combat aircraft into Syria. But you got, yes, sir. You got Europe. They're crippled right now because of all these refugees going in. Yes, sir. And pretty much, the people are scared to come out of their homes. Yes. Because it's so dangerous. <clears throat> these gangs of Muslims are roaming through these cities. And uh, some pretty serious stuff. How many of you know who Le Pen is in France? It is the, uh, I forget the name of their party, uh, but anyway. Uh, she has come out and said, you better stop these Muslims or they'll overrun your country and, the, and, and, and France or any of the rest of them will never be the same again. And boy, you talk about criticism. She has been criticized like you wouldn't believe, but you know what? She told the truth. She told the truth. 
All right, we'll have a word of prayer and let you go. We'll meet again next Sunday, Lord willing. Pick this up. We may not be here next Sunday. Uh, if I'm gone and somebody else shows up up here, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. All right, let's pray, brother. Will you dismiss us?